Everyone who freeze dries knows what this is. This is the chamber for the Harvest Right freeze dryer. And I think it's time to talk a little bit about cleaning. And I was a little bit hesitant about making this video because I don't want to criticize anyone else's videos that are out there. But I think it's time to address a couple important issues. This chamber is made from stainless steel which contains 16% chromium, 10% nickel, and 2% molybdenum. It's the characteristics of these metals that keeps stainless steel from rusting and makes it excellent for corrosion and wear resistance. What I want to discuss is the surface of this chamber. Because of the chromium that's within the stainless steel, what makes stainless steel so impervious to corrosion and rusting is what's called chromium oxide. So the chromium within the steel basically creates an oxide finish inside this chamber and that is a problem with cleaning it. How do you properly clean the chamber without harming the chromium oxide that needs to be present inside this chamber? What I'm concerned about is that improper cleaning of the chamber will strip away the chromium oxide layer inside the chamber and remove the wear resistance of the stainless steel. I'd like to share with you a new word for your vocabulary, and that word is passervation. The passervation is a method of improving the corrosion resistance of stainless steel by removing ferrous contaminants like free iron from the surface, restoring them to the original corrosion specifications. If you really want to know how to clean stainless steel, that can be found in ASTM regulation A380-17. Uh, ASTM, ASTM stands for the American Society for Testing Materials, which basically it's like the consumer reports for the manufacturing industry. ASTM says basically that nitric acid is a friendly acid towards stainless steel and is the only mineral acid which should be used to clean stainless steel. They go on and say avoid contact of the acid with other metals, particularly the aluminum copper bases on cookware. And they recommend that a 10% solution, one part nitric acid and nine parts water is what is used to clean stainless steel. And by doing so, you will create the passiv passivation process, restoring the chromium oxide back to its original condition. Now that sounds all well and nice, but where does one get nitric acid on a daily basis to clean stainless steel? So if you're like me and everyone else, we don't have an access to nitric acid, so we have to turn to other cleaning compounds. Now, what does Harvest Right say about cleaning their freeze dryer. On page 14 of the Harvest Right manual, they cl clearly state that to clean the interior and exterior of the freeze dryer, you should use a mild detergent. However, Harvest Right doesn't go any further to define what a mild detergent is. They also state that it is important to clean the chamber and the shelf on a regular basis, but I guess they leave that unto us on how often that should be done. One caution that Harvest Right does include is they specifically say do not use benzene, thinner, or Clorox for cleaning. They may damage the surface of the appliance and may even cause fires. Now the word Clorox is a brand name basically for bleach and I'm surprised how many people that have posted videos on the internet use bleach for cleaning when it is, when it is specifically stated not to use bleach. So I went through my house and I gathered up a lot of cleaning chem chemicals and many of these chemicals are being recommended by individuals on the internet to clean their Harvest Right stainless steel chamber. First of all we have white vinegar which is 2.5 
on the pH scale. We then have bleach, which is 11 to 12 on the pH scale. We have baking soda, which is 8 on the pH scale. Ammonia, which shares the pH scale with bleach, and mild dish detergent, which is 8 to 9 on the pH scale. One cleaner I didn't include is Comet Cleanser. Well, there's two problems with this. One, it is abrasive, and two, it contains bleach, which is not recommended by Harvest Right. When cleaning your freeze dryer, there should be two objectives. One, we want not to damage the stainless steel of the freeze dryer, and the second, if we want to be able to sanitize the freeze dryer and remove any possible transfer of any type of bacteria from surface to food. If you recall the definition of sublimation that is turning a solid into a vapor. Any cleaners or detergents residue that is left on the surface can vaporize and drift around in the chamber and actually land on your food causing changes of smell and taste and causing intestinal and gastric distress. Detergents with a chlorine or ammonia base will attack the corrosive resistant surface of the stainless steel. And because of that, ammonia and bleach are out. White vinegar or any vinegar with a pH of 2.5 is highly acidic and that can also eat away the surface of the chromium oxidation. So vinegar is out. Baking soda requires several rinses to remove all the residue that is left behind. And because baking soda does, is not a sanitizer, baking soda is out. What is left is a recommendation from Harvest Right, which is a mild detergent. Mild detergents have a pH between 8 and 9, which still makes them an alkali-based cleaner, which can still, over the long run, damage the stainless steel surface. Whatever mild detergent you use, it may or may not be approved by the FDA for food surface preparation. In this example, Dawn is not recommended for food surface preparation unless after it is used, you rinse it with clean water and then apply a sanitizer after the fact. So, if you go by the words of the FDA, Dawn is out. I'd like you to consider this alternative. Isopropyl alcohol 70%, also known as rubbing alcohol, is both a cleaner and a disinfectant. Rubbing alcohol has a pH between 6 and 8, which makes it neutral depending on the amount of water. In this case, this is 70% isopropyl alcohol. In a press release from the EPA on May 15, 2020, they recognize that isopropyl alcohol can be a sanitizer and safe for all food surfaces during the manufacturing and preparation of food. In research from the University of Hertfordshire in England have found that using isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol does not have any effect upon stainless steel properties. An added benefit of using isopropyl alcohol is that when it dries, it dries free and clear and leaves no residue behind. Isopropyl alcohol in its 70% state is flammable but can be diluted to a 50-50% state where it will not react to fire. So I became curious on how often you should clean your freeze dryer and what can I find inside the freeze dryer if I clean it and let it go for several weeks 
or if I don't clean it for several months. So what I have here, I have a petri dish with a growing medium inside which is sterilized and sterilized wipes. So the first collections I did was to my freeze dry chamber and other items that have not been cleaned for at least a month. The second test that I did was cleaning my freeze dryer and sanitizing it and then putting and drying different types of food and taking samples after each batch. Here's a question for everyone who has a freeze dryer. How clean and sanitary is your freeze dryer? So we're going to put this to a test. So I have this. Everyone has recognized this is the famous Harvest Right freeze dry pillow. I have the four tray machine. Okay, so I have some medium right here. This is sterilized and I have some sterilize swab. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a, cult, a culture from the back of this pad. So this, this is the front facing, this is the back facing. So we're going to take a swab and we're just going to see what happens. Now, when I get done with a, a cycle, I just take the pad and lay it on top of my freeze dryer. So I guess this will also depend on how clean my freeze dryer is going to be. Okay, so we're just going to do a little bit of a swab inside of here and that's done. Now we're also going to do the chamber. So we got to go out to the garage for my freeze dryer. Okay just to be fair here's my kitchen towel. Now I was going to do a swab of my kitchen floor but I think I'm going to not do that but I'm going to put down towel. So we're going to do the towel also. So I'm going to get my swab around my kitchen towel and we're going to do that also. Now we don't end at that. How about this? My wife's purse. So how clean is the bottom of my wife's purse? So we're going to do the same thing here. And we're going to do my wife's purse. And last but not least, to keep everything fair, we have to have a control. Now the control is this, we're just going to take a sterilized wipe and we're just going to go like that. The control is there just in case the batch of medium has been contaminated or the batch of swabs have been contaminated. If this is done properly, nothing should show up on the control. So I have control, my wife's purse, the Harvest Right pad, Harvest Right chamber, and the towel that I use to clean the chamber with. We're going to have to put these in a nice warm place for the next week or so and then we'll see what happens. I've taken culture samples from my regular regular use of my freeze dryer and I've taken some directly after a load but this time I'm going to sanitize it with alcohol and do a load and then take some readings right after that to see what happens so to do that I'm going to sanitize the daylights out of this one with alcohol to see how much culture or germs I guess you could say I can pick up just after one cycle to see if there's any kind of a pattern 
everything has been wiped down with alcohol and that was fairly labor intensive it's something that I would not do after every cycle but this freeze dryer right now is absolutely sterile so we're going to do my next load and then see right after the load gets done I'm going to see and take another culture, sam culture sample and see what we can grow in that I just finished up a load of shredded cheddar cheese and this is the first time once it was defrosted that there's been a load since I sterilized it so we're going to take a sample of the chamber and see what comes up this is the second batch that I've done since I sterilized the chamber so I have another petri dish that says 531 second batch the first batch was cheese the second batch was potatoes so we're going to see how clean or how sterile this remains to be so we're going to swab the chamber here and see what we can come up with this is the third batch since I sterilized the freeze dryer the last the last batch I just performed was sloppy Joe's so we're gonna swab this and then see what happens In 15 days and here are my samples this is from the first batch if you take a look at this this is after I did my shredded cheese so that's about three days after it was sanitized my second batch was mashed potatoes and it's about the same and I believe this was about five days after the chamber was sanitized my third batch was sloppy joe mix and it's also I'd say about the same now this one was the original sample from the chamber just after it's just been wiped down it was not sanitized but just wiped out with a towel And this one was my towel now the interesting comparison between my towel and my chamber is the towel would have transferred all the microbes or all the bacteria to my chamber and what I believe is because the chamber went through a freezing process and a vacuum environment it killed some of the bacteria you'd think that the towel and the chamber would have the same amount of bacteria but apparently it doesn't so what this is telling me is that sanitizing does in fact work and that's pretty much a no-brainer so you can tell here when it wasn't sanitized compared to here when it was sanitized there's much more culture in this petri dish than in the ones above now before you go running and screaming to the hills thinking that your freeze dryer is this big bacterial monster I want to make something perfectly clear your freeze dryer is not the same as this petri dish this petri dish has a constant source of food for bacteria to grow on it it's normally kept in a nice warm place and has plenty of moist moisture for the bacteria to thrive under normal conditions a freeze dryer 
is going to be dry, it's going to be cold, and in most cases it's going to have a vacuum. Now, if you're a total slob and you have all kinds of food in the freeze dryer where bacteria can grow on it, well then that's a different matter. You need to keep your freeze dryer clean and you need to do it properly. You need to use a neutral cleaner that will sanitize and disinfect the chamber, shelves, and rack. You should not use any cleaners that are high in alkali or high in acids that could damage the stainless, the stainless steel. My recommendation, if you're not going to be using your freeze dryer for a couple of weeks, I'd leave the door open, I'd leave the drain valve open so that the air can come in and out to keep your freeze dryer cool and dry inside. But most of all, you need to just be, keep it clean and use common sense when using your freeze dryer. And don't believe everything you hear on the web. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. Do your own research. Find the truth. It's out there. One more thing I would like to cover are unintended consequences. For example, this is the ball valve for the Harvest Right drain. Not too long ago, I experienced a vacuum leak and I could not understand what was happening. I tore apart the pump, I tore apart the insides of the freeze dryer looking for the vacuum leak. Inside of this is a polished chrome ball. This is the output side of the ball valve. However, on the inner side of the ball valve that goes towards the freeze dryer, the chrome ball down inside of here is no longer polished but is pitted and rusted. And because of this, this valve was leaking vacuum. So you have to be cautious about what cleaners you use. Anything from phosphoric acids to lemon juices to white vinegar are all on the acidic scale. In fact, even the ice within the freeze dryer that comes from your food is on the acidic scale. And this water, as innocent as it is, is acidic. And is that water that over time corroded my ball valve.